Hey everybody, Austin Meyer here, and today we are going to do an Xavion flight test. Now, Xavion is an app that I wrote that is designed to guide an airplane safely down to the ground after an engine failure. That's what the app tries to do. Today we're going to find out, at least in this scenario, if an airplane can actually do it. I'll take my evolution up, maybe 15,000 feet or so, somewhere over central South Carolina. Boom, pull the engine back, hit the emergency button on the iPad, and we will follow the hoops in Xavion down to whatever runway it guides me to. So, let's give it a try. And we'll hop on in. Camera, check. Okay, so here we are uh, in the cockpit, and as you can see, the window is all just washed out as pure white uh, from all that light coming in from outside. So I've got my iPhone here recording video, and you can just think of this iPhone as a, uh, a live indication of what's going on out the window. Think of it as a little bit of a, uh, a HUD, if you will, so you can see what's going on. All right, let's start her up. And my start temperature limit is a thousand, so that was not a hot start, even if it might have looked that way. And experimental eight four for X-ray tech on off one three ones. Okay, so this is not going quite as planned here today. Uh, it looks like all the GPSs have failed. Um, we have no uh, GPS signal here on my portable ADS-B receiver, no GPS on the pad, no GPS receiver on the phone. My Garmin, uh, first it said it was going to backup GPS, and then it says it's going to dead reckoning. Um, we have lost in this airplane one, two, three, four, five uh, GPS's. I don't think it's just me. I think we've had a GPS failure in uh, the GPS satellite constellation. But this is interesting. Uh, I was reading on uh, AvWeb once about how there was some avionics where if they lost the GPS, they lost their attitude, <laughs> which is like insane to me. It's insane. How do you lose, how do you make a piece of avionics that loses its ability to give you attitude, tell you right, you know, upside down from right side up when the GPS fails? And the answer is they were using GPS aided attitude. Well, I think that's grossly negligent and stupid because as soon as the GPS fails, you lose your attitude. Xavion doesn't do that. So why don't we take a look at how Xavion works? And as you can see, Xavion is tracking the real world quite well, but it's doing this even though the GPS is lost. How do we do it? Well, I'll show you. We'll go to Post Flight System Diagnostics. Now I'm going to go to the AHORS Diagnostics page. This is a page that only I can see that you cannot see in Xavion, but I'm just going to show you the inner workings of the app here. What we have here are four little different ways to compute the bank of the airplane. And uh, so GPS LAT. This computes the bank of the airplane by looking at the curvature of the GPS breadcrumbs. So if the GPS breadcrumbs are describing a curve of a certain radius at a certain speed, you can deduce mathematically what the bank angle must be to track that path. Watch a water skier. If you don't know what I mean, watch a water skier. He banks at a certain bank angle in a car of a certain turn. Xavion and other uh, avionics do the same thing with GPS. But you'll notice my GPS lag is at zero percent. In other words, we have no GPS. Our garments dropped into dead reckoning. There's no GPS data up here. And so our GPS lateral uh, waiting for bank is at zero percent. What about R dot? R dot is another way to look at bank angle. 
As you'll see, we are in about a 20 degree left bank here. And if you look closely, you can see the, the, the sky, the clouds kind of coming by the nose. That is a rotation of the nose of the airplane to the left. Because this left bank, the nose is rotating to the left. And the gyros in this iPad can track that. Even with no GPS signal, that's the R dot. That's 42%. And as you can see, the bank estimate that it comes up with, this green line, is quite close to uh, the actual bank of the airplane. Another way you can look uh, at estimate bank is called the QR ratio. The QR ratio is the ratio of the, cur the carving, the pitch rate, right? How much the nose here, I'll show you. This is the Q. Yeah, you see how we pull? We pull that nose up. That's Q, that's pitch rate. So the Q is the pitch rate, it's how much the nose comes up. The R is the yaw rate, it's how much the nose comes left or right, which I'm demonstrating here a little bit. Okay, so in this bank, we have some pitch rate as we carve the turn, pulling the nose up through the turn, and we have some yaw rate as the nose turns around. And uh, the ratio of those two can be, is called the QR ratio to me, and that can also be used to estimate bank, and that's the orange line, and as you can tell, that's not that bad. Another way we can estimate bank is G-load. Everybody knows there's a G-load associated with each bank, and so as you go to higher and higher G-loads, you have uh, more and more bank as you wrap up that so-called dead man spiral. And so when you combine all of these, the uh, GPS lateral, of which we're getting zero still on this pad, um, the R dot, which is the yaw rate, the QR ratio, which is the ratio of pitch to yaw, which describes a, a bank, we take the R tangent of it, and the G load, where there's a known G load associated with each bank angle, if you average all these up, you get this, this white line, which is the weighted average. All right, let's go back to our in-flight screen, and now let's see if it works. With no GPS here, although the Garmin, the Garmin is uh, it's on a backup mode, it's still managing to get one of its GPSs, but uh, with the iPad uh, does not have GPS. So it is tracking the phone, <laughs> and I just got a terrain system not available uh, warning from the Garmin, so the GPS is, is cutting out again for the Garmin's as well. But uh, despite the GPS coming and going for the airplane, Xavion is consistently giving a good bank angle, and it does this by looking at the gyros that gyro rotation or spin direction, if you will, in the pad. And so we're not gonna do an Xavion power off approach because we don't have any GPS for guidance, but I'm kind of glad the GPS system failed in the middle of my demo here because it lets me uh, test and demonstrate how Xavion can continue to give you bank and pitch, which are obviously critical to survival, even after a GPS failure. So, uh, a little bit of a different video for YouTube today than I thought. I Okay, well, definitely a, a little bit of a learning experience there, and a um, nice little demo of how we can still continue to give attitude uh, even after GPS has failed, which is a nice thing to have uh, in any app. <laughs> and you can see my uh, dead reckoning here. <laughs> it's just doing the best it can based on the last thing uh, it found. Eh, maybe it's not a terrible guess. It thinks I'm pretty close. It thinks I'm close to Owens with dead reckoning. So there's some dead reckoning too. Whew, okay, <laughs> so that's supposed to be an Xavion demo turned into a uh, what to do if you don't have GPS demo with um, some demonstration of how Xavion can still maintain attitude control after GPS loss. I'm sure there's a localized uh, GPS loss. So it'll probably be fixed tomorrow. We'll go up and try this again tomorrow with Xavion. Uh, in the meantime, 
the uh, Stratus 380S B receiver did not have GPS. My Apple iPhone didn't have GPS and Garmin did not have GPS. So we lost GPS on uh, the Stratus, the Apple, and the Garmin. So I think it was a, a localized uh, failure in the system, in the GPS system, in the Constellation or something. But uh, we got to see attitude control without GPS and some dead reckoning. And uh, tomorrow we'll try some engine out operations. <laughs>